And what's being called the moon event of the year happens on Halloween night for the first time in decades. A full moon will be high above the entire U.S. on October 31st. Halloween night will be a little spookier than usual this year. Throughout folklore and mythology, the full moon has always been linked to strange happenings on our planet. So in a way, 2020 has been one long full moon. Yeah, there's usually uh, 12 full moons in a year, one for each month. But this month, October will be shining extra bright. During an eventful year for the moon, with 13 full moons, the rare super blood wolf moon on January 10th, back to back to back super moons in March, April, and May, and now in October with two full moons. The one Saturday has its own special name. The first full moon that we've had on Halloween in 76 years, and it just happens to be a blue moon because it's the second full moon of October. The last time a full moon was seen on Halloween in all U.S. time zones was 1944. It's the kind of celestial event Steve Wessling is excited about. This is unique. And he suggests you pause for a moment and take a look. Go and view it. Uh, see what you can see. You remember those events. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah, actually, look at this live shot from Sky 2 right now. It looks Orange. like a harvest moon, <laughs> yeah. right? Like a pumpkin. The phrase once wow. in a blue moon usually means a rare occurrence that can either be lucky or unlucky. And isn't there something about a full moon on Halloween night that means anything can happen? It's uh, stuff. Where wolf stuff goes down. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, at least somebody Spooky. will be out there. Suzanne. That is beautiful, <laughs> though. You know what? Let's hope it means lucky. Yeah, yeah exactly. We don't need any more. We got to turn it around. <laughs> Well, we begin with breaking news. A strong earthquake in the Aegean Sea has shaken Turkey and Greece. Turkey has been struck by a powerful earthquake off its Aegean coast, causing buildings to collapse in the coastal city of Izmir. Earthquake that hit about an hour ago in the sea between Greece and Turkey. This is new video that we just got in of one of many buildings collapsing. It's just, it, it, it's stunning the, uh, the amount of damage that we're going to see there, uh, you know, yet to be. Turkish media have showed the wreckage of a multi-story building. This is in central Izmir. People climbing in to try and reach anyone who might be trapped inside. It seemed to be affecting both Greece and Turkey. So, so those two countries have both been uh, affected. And now I think it, it is worth emphasizing, this was a very significant earthquake. The magnitude has been estimated at something between 6.6 .6 and up to 7.1. And the tremors going all the way to, to Istanbul in Turkey, to Athens in Greece. And some of the images we have seen of, of the effects of that have been very, very striking. Also, uh, reports of these mini tsunamis uh, occurring, of large waves coming into co coastal areas uh, flooding. Right now, concern is growing as a fish kill continues in the Noose River. It's a story Nani or Sign has been following for weeks. Lower Noose River Keeper tells me that the fish kill in those waters is something like they haven't seen since the 1990s. It is heartbreaking to see any fish kill, and it has been really tough the last five weeks. Katie Hunt's love for North Carolina's rivers and streams is part of her job as a river keeper and says it's tough when something bad happens to something you love. We have seen many, many fish kills, very large, but typically they only last for a couple of days or as long as a week. Environmental groups like Sound Rivers and people who use these waterways are concerned. It's truly an environmental disaster. Back now with an update on the so-called murder hornets, the invasive species that could be deadly to humans and bees, and tonight news of the first known nest in the U.S. Look like something out of a sci-fi movie, futuristic beekeeper suits and ominous red headlamps in the hunt for murder hornets. And this morning, finally a major breakthrough for Washington State researchers who have found where some of the elusive hornets have been hiding after decapitating and decimating bee populations. The giant Asian hornets, also known to humans for their painful and sometimes deadly sting. Ah! Searing pain! These are the most deadly. 
and with white protective gear saran wrap in a vacuum, they dismantled a nest in a tree. It wasn't underground like these nests are normally in Asia. They're already exhibiting different behavior. Still got to read? Entomologists using dental floss to attach an electronic tag to a so-called murder hornet that led them back to the nest, which they sealed off, then vacuuming out over a hundred hornets. First found in the U.S. only several months ago, the giant hornets native to Asia. They can be deadly to humans, killing up to 50 people in Japan each year. Here we are with just six days left until the U.S. presidential election, and yet there's another case of racial tension caused by the death of an African-American man, allegedly at the hands of police. We've got several videos that we're going to show you now this afternoon. This was the uh, scene late last night just blocks from uh, the White House and the U.S. Capitol building. Uh, two of the most important cities in the United States are enduring serious racial unrest. All of this breaking out overnight as demonstrators clash with police both here in our nation's capital of Washington, D.C. and in Philadelphia, ironically, our nation's first capital. And yet neither one of these stories were covered by the national television networks. We, on the other hand, have been bringing you the stories and allowing you to see them really just play themselves out. Uh, you also had a man pulled from a car. Uh, this is actually more too. We were at that strip mall as well, but this this is a shocking video. This was police pulling a man from his car saying that he was trying to run over a police officer, beating the car in, smashing the windows, pulling him out. Uh, so, you know, it, oh my God. It, it's just, it's amazing to see, you know, when you're there the first hour of these protests, how they start peacefully. But then as the night progresses, it starts to get more and more violent. And I did see those, you know, covering the, the George Floyd, excuse me, the George Floyd protests with you from the very beginning as well. Okay. The same thing. All right. So how does all of this play out? And is the root cause of these of this unrest and police action or, or is it something bigger than just what the police did? Maybe something deeper. Usual this year, and that is because the sky will be lit up by a blue moon making.